today I want to cover how to correctly tune your VE table or volumetric efficiency for your engine. In order to do this, there are a lot of other impactors upon the fuel air fuel ratio that we need to eliminate to get to the bare bone effects of the VE table. Things like short term, long term fuel trims the mass airflow sensor, correct injector data, stoich of the fuel, EQ ratios, power enrichment, etc, etc. First thing we're going to look at is the actual VE table in the tune. So we're going to go up here to engine. And we're actually going to be under airflow. So we're model modeling the airflow of the engine. We're going to look at main VE and hit that primary button. Now this is a factory tune from a 2004 GTO and this is kind of this is what we're looking at for the V table both in a, a graph table and a three-dimensional view. So we'll come back to this and we're going to go over to fueling and we're going to look at right here, we've got Stoich AFR under fueling. Now this is set for pump gas, 14.681. And we're going to go ahead and leave that. We're going to go over to open loop. And we're going to go into EQ ratio. Now these ratios impact the commanded air fuel the larger the number above one it's divided into the stoich so that it's going to make you richer so we want to eliminate this impact to correctly tune the VE so some people will take and make this whole table all 1.0 generally since we're going to be tuning at operating temperatures if we just take everything above 140 degrees and make it equal 1.0 that will work for our purposes then we're going to go to fueling open loop we're going to disable the short-term fuel trims and the reason we do this is because if the commanded air fuel ratio doesn't match the actual based upon the narrow band oxygen sensors it's going to try to adjust that fueling on its own and if it does that it's going to impact our decision on how we tune the VE table so we don't want any other impacts of the computer or the narrow bands impacting our fueling while we're trying to tune the VE table because we want to base our decisions based upon the AFR error that we see on our wide band between the commanded and the actual so that we know the adjustments we need to make on the VE table to make those match as closely as possible. Okay, so now that we've got our EQ ratio set to 1 above 140 degrees to make sure that it's not impacting our fueling at operating temperatures, and we've got our short-term fuel trims disabled, we're going to go over here to the oxygen sensor tab still under fueling for the engine, and we want to force open loop by changing the temperature of the enable to 285 so that it does not enable closed loop then we're going to go over here and for the disable the long term fuel trims by changing the minimum engine coolant temperature to 285 so that it never enables them. So again, they don't impact fueling. 
Then we're going to go over here to the NG Diagnostics tab and we're going to click on Airflow. Mass Airflow Frequency. We're going to make the mass airflow sensor inactive essentially by causing it to fail on purpose by setting it to zero. Now what this will do is this will give you an engine code so we can go into the diagnostics and we can actually click on the mass airflow circuit range performance P0101, 102, and 103. We can just disable those if we want to so that we do not get a check engine light. You can actually leave them on if you want to make sure that the mass airflow sensor did fail. Okay, from there, the one more thing that we need to check on is our power enrichment. We're going to go to the engine tab, power enrich tab, and we're going to bring up our EQ ratio for gas under power enrichment. Now, for this setup, we're going to assume stock injectors cam only motor. So for this setup we want to be somewhere 12.5 to 13 to 1 air fuel ratio when we're wide open. So in order to achieve that we need to find the number that divides into 14.68 which, which is our pump gas stoich number. The number that divides into that that gives us the desired 12.5 and enter that in our ratio. So that number is 1.17. So we set that across the board to 1.17. So now our desired air fuel ratio at part throttle and idle is going to be 14.68 stoich. And our wide open throttle commanded air fuel ratio is going to be about 12.5. AFR. So now that we've got that set up with all other impactors to the VE table disabled, we can tune our VE table. And how we're going to do that is we would log driving around part throttle. You'd start out driving part throttle with no dramatic quick changes in throttle position to let the, the table and the scanner populate and you're going to want to set this up so your rows and columns match your VE table and you're going to set it up as an AFR error between your commanded AFR and your wideband reading so that any cell populates it's going to show you how much error is in that VE table and all you have to do is drive and log the conditions that you're testing and save that. Now for example I've got a log here this is from a boosted setup at the drag strip. So what I've got here is the numbers in red are rich the numbers in green are lean. So what you've got here is during the burnout when I first get on it and start spinning the tires the RPMs jump up and it has a little bit of blip -a -lean. That's no problem at all. There's no load on the motor. It's not any issue at all. It's pretty normal. As we get going here, we get in, we're a little bit rich. Now we can move along to where the actual pass is. And I can find a spot, let's say, right here at 6,000 RPMs and 140 kPa. I'm showing in the, in the scan 2.7% rich. So what I would do is I'd be able to take that number in that same cell of my VE table in the tune and I'd be able to lower that number by 2.7% and then save and write that tune along with any other parts of the VE table I corrected and I'd be able to make another log whether it be you're wanting to check cruising, part throttle, idle or wide open at the drag strip whatever conditions and log that and save the error again and you can through the process of doing that within a, a few temp uh, drives 
or runs, you can get your VE table dialed right in. Okay, just a couple of little pointers to start out on a cam setup. You have cammed LS1 or LS2 or whatever it may be. And you've gone through all this process to get ready to tune the VE table. Well, cams are going to be less efficient at idle, the big, a bigger cam with overlap. So a good starting point I found in the VE table in the idle cells, which you're going to see is going to be your 800 to 1200 RPM range. You may want to raise your idle speed a little bit to start with to help it when you're first starting out. And then the KPA, the kilopascals of the VE table at the idle point, going to be somewhere, depending on the cam, could be 50 to 70 KPA or so. And those cells, you're going to want to multiply those by 0.75. So they'll be 75% of what they were stock. And that'll help reduce the fueling so you're not so rich right off the bat with the cam. Then you're going to go to your base idle airflow, which you can go to engine, idle, airflow, idle airflow, and you can increase this entire table by 2 grams per second. to help it have enough air flow to idle and start and idle. Now there's plenty of other things with the idle to fine tune later on, but we want to make sure we get our, just get it to run and get your fueling correct. And then we can work on things like startup airflow, friction airflow, the delay time of the friction airflow, and then learn how to actually set up a uh, log an idle and get your base idle running airflow dialed in perfectly. But for now, uh, that little bit of adjustment will help it get it running and started so you can get your VE table dialed in. Now once you get your VE table completely dialed in that you're satisfied with it, then you can start to choose what things you want to re-enable or not re-enable depending on your setup. As far as like the mass airflow sensor on a boosted setup, a lot of times you'll stay speed density and not use the mass airflow sensor. If you're cam only, you're probably going to want to go ahead and use the mass airflow sensor. So you're going to re-enable that and then you're going to tune, do the same thing logging and you're going to dial in the mass airflow sensor. When that's done, you can go ahead and re-enable all your long-term, short-term fuel trims and then you're done. You're basically done with fueling and at that point you can move on to fine-tuning your idle, timing, uh, your system, if you change the thermostat, your shift points in the transmission, etc, etc. But as far as the fueling aspect, you'll be done at that point. Um, if you're boosted, in some cases, you may want to stay open loop speed density and not you ever use mass airflow or fuel trims again. But just keep in mind, we only disabled all that stuff so we could get right down to the VE table and accurately and quickly as possible dial in the VE table. And then from there, it's up to you whether you want and your setup and your desires of what you want to re-enable all that stuff or not. And go from there.